I'd never heard of a donkey punch. And when it was explained to everyone, they all laughed, and we thought, oh, that's very funny. But one guy there seemed to think it was actually a good idea. And it got me thinking about what would happen if someone actually thought that a donkey punch was something that would be fun and OK to do. Um, and that was combined with um, basically being on holiday once um, and seeing all these beautiful yachts in a harbor with no one on them and wondering what kind of things went on on these kind of boats. And I thought, oh, these two things together might be an interesting movie. Uh, and then I took the idea to Ollie, and uh, pretty soon, you know, we were making it. Yeah, so uh, we, uh, the film was made by a fantastic company in Britain called Warpax, and we set up to, uh, to make low budget genre films. And um, through them, uh, the producer there, a guy called Mark Herbert, who has made up films for a guy called Shane Meadows. Uh, he's a very energy-driven guy, and uh, he heard he heard that story, and he said, you know, in nine months' time, I want to make this film. So uh, we had a very concentrated, collaborative period where over nine months we we very profoundly researched and wrote the script, many, many, many drafts of the script. And uh, true to his word, nine months later, we were in pre-production in Cape Town, um, standing on a boat, figuring out how the hell to make this. Uh, it's a very character-driven yeah. film, I think. It must have been a challenge for you both as writers, uh, because, well, I told you earlier in the interview, maybe it's a little bit, you ask a little bit uh, of the audience to sympathize with uh, characters who are not that sympathetic. Um, was it a, well, an added pressure for you as, as writers? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the film, um, what we wanted to do uh, as writers and also as producers and actors, everyone involved, we wanted to make something that was uh, was a genre film and, and you know uh, hit those beats and had the kind of crazy tension and violence and obviously uh, very provocative push the boat out in terms of the the approach to sexual politics. Um, but also was grounded in reality and, and had characters that people in, in Britain could watch and say, that could be my friend, that could be my sister or my brother. Um, and that was very important to kind of combine those things. So um, what's been interesting about the film is that, um, you know, uh, it, it's a film that is a genre film, but also we want to make a film that operates at another level. So, when people love the film, they love it combines those two things, and sometimes it's very funny reading reviews. Sometimes people say, well, it's not enough of a genre film. We know the gore comes too late. Or people say the reverse. Oh, it just becomes, you know, it starts off so well and becomes silly at the end. So, you know, it, uh, as a filmmaker, what's interesting is trying to combine those things. But, you know, that, that's the challenge. Yeah. How, how, was it, uh, how was it received in, uh, in England? Because you told me, the Daily Mail uh, had a whole page <coughs> on the film, and it uh, was very negative. <laughs> yes. Well, the, the Daily Mail is, a, is quite a right-wing newspaper in the UK, and they are sort of moral crusaders, and they had a big feature on our film, which basically said, a punch in the face of decency. <laughs> and it's about how, you know, this is a shocking, you, you know, this film should never have been made, and it doesn't represent Britain, and it actually, does represent Britain because Britain is collapsing. And it was all this kind of stuff that, you know, it was very enjoyable for us. We had a good laugh about it. But they were, you know, genuinely quite worked up. But what about your, what about the audience, the British audience? Yeah, you know, look, um, I grew, you know, the reason I want to make films is because um, I grew up on films that fucking blew my mind. You know, I I remember watching Blue Velvet for the first time and. Uh, for a few dollars more, so to have made a film, to have been part of making a film that had an old-fashioned moral outrage, and the biggest selling newspaper in Britain, you know, had uh, as its a huge page saying this is the sickest, vilest, most depraved film ever made, it was, and, 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 a, and a, a newspaper I despised that supported the Nazis in the war, gave me great, immense pleasure uh, <laughs> that to, to be able to be part of making a work that genuinely people to notice it. Uh, a film that had no stars in it, a film that 
the budget was so small it would barely have paid for you know the, the catering on a big Hollywood film. You know, for me that's a great achievement, and that's I think what filmmaking is about. You know, not to just sort of sail quietly into the night. So uh, it was great, you know, and I, and I think if you make a horror film, it should horrify people, you know, and it did that. And it was it was re recently released in the, in the U.S. and I think the the response there was different from the response in, uh, in Great Britain, right? Um, yeah, the, the response in America, um, again, very interesting that, you know, it's, it's, you know, up against very, very, very big films, um, and yet it, it made a name for itself, and uh, the response was very polarized, you know, people either loved it or hated it, but what was interesting was, amongst the people who loved it, it ranged from the New York Times to Atypical News, so a very interesting spectrum of people responded to it. But then, you know, you get the flip side and you, you get people saying this is despicable, which, again, uh, people have said, oh, you know, how do you feel when people, it's, like, it's a fucking horror film, you know, it's meant, people are meant at a certain level to find it despicable. You know, if we made a romantic comedy and people said it was despicable, that would be a problem, <laughs> because romantic comedy is meant to please everyone, but this isn't, this is meant to get in there and meant to push you. Uh, can you tell us something about the logistics of uh, shooting on a yacht in South Africa? Because that, that was where the film was uh, made. Yeah, uh, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shooting on a boat is very difficult. And um, when we wrote the script, you know, a big part of uh, what David saw was these boats in this marina. And, uh, and that seems so simple when, you know, he called me up, it seemed so simple at the time. Well, yes, just a single location and seven characters. Uh, but, you know, once you get into the nitty gritty of actually um, shooting on water, things become incredibly complicated at a very, very fast rate. And, and very simple things that, that would never occur to you, like, well, you know, how do people use toilets when they're on a boat and the bilge tank is filled up on the boat? Well, you have to send boats to take them off. That takes 20 minutes. We only have 24 days to shoot. Every 20 minutes is, you know, uh, another kind of little nick. So it, it's very, very challenging indeed. Um, and then things like, you know, uh, the water in South Africa is very cold. So the swimming scenes in the film that seem so fun and pleasurable, <laughs> those actors were actually entering hypothermic conditions. And, Right after those scenes, they were pulled out of the water and wrapped in foil suits, or you know, they would literally lose consciousness and end up in hospital. So, you know, every single element of it is is a challenge, and um, and doing that in 24 days is even more of a challenge. So it was it was tough, and yeah. to this day, I don't quite know how we we achieved it. And you told me the the boat itself was more expensive than the film, right? Yes. So if you have damaged it. The boat was, um, uh, before I shot the film, I had to have a, a meeting with the Bond company who insure your film, and, and they were very upset because they didn't want to make the film because it wasn't enough money for them. And the guy, who was a very tough Scottish guy, he kept saying to me, um, this boat costs four times the amount of your film. If you sink the fucking boat, we're fucked. And I was like, well, we, had to, we had to take that scene out of the film where we actually blow the boat <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, it was like, I'm not going to sink the boat. And he was like, yes, you are. Shooting on boats is hell. Take it from me, I know. I was like, well, I know what I'm doing. He's like, no, you don't. And anyway. <laughs> uh, do you both want to stick to the genre uh, for your next uh, projects? Um, I, I, you know, we both enjoy, I mean, we had a great experience making this film, and we enjoy this genre. I think, you know, we both like to stretch our wings as writers and always as a director. And the, the next project that we have lined up is, it's not a horror film, but it has kind of action adventure elements that, you know, would be recognizable to people who've seen this film, but um, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's, exactly, it's exactly that. It's um, making things that, that use genre, but, but, but push outside the genre at the same time. So, uh, you know, this film um, kind of combines like a sort of Larry Clark sort of thing with, you know, with, with very, very violent, frightening thriller. And uh, the next one is, it's actually a period film set in Britain in the early 70s, and it kind of combines sort of a 
epic British kind of rock and roll feel with um, with a sort of very very extreme Walter Hill, Sam Peckinpah type of thing. <laughs> and it's kind of you know I think will it be US produced or from the UK? It is, will be British produced, British. but with an eye to make something that, that you know very similar actually to the kind of ethos of Donkey Punch, which is something that's very British but has elements that people everywhere want to see, which mm. is to be honest, sex and violence. <laughs> but, but done with British accents, which people find cute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> this next one will be rock and roll sex and violence with British accents. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>